What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Justin Lorber, a.k.a. Future Dodgers, here to break down uh, some decisions the Dodgers made yesterday as it pertains to the Rule 5 draft. Justin, the Dodgers end up protecting three players, Nick Frasso, Landon Knack, Hunter Fiducia, in the Rule 5 draft, adding these three players to their 40-man roster, bringing them up to 38 spots. We're going to get into the nitty gritty here on each of these guys in a moment. Headline, any surprises here as far as guys that were protected or guys that were not? No, no surprises here. Uh, I, I thought Frasso and Knack were kind of the two locks or, or close to it. And then Fiducia, also a guy with a very good shot. So no, not surprised. Let's get into Frasso. We'll start there. Um, you did your prospect ranking update midway through the season. Um, you had him as the number five prospect in the system. This is a guy who pitched at both double A and triple A last year, 25 year old <laughs> acquired in the just amazing Mitch white trade that continues to, to reap benefits for the Dodgers here, but 93 innings last year, mostly at double A, a little bit of triple A, um, but had some success 3.26 ERA at triple A, um, 3.91 at double A. He was striking out nearly 30% of the guys he faced at double A struggled a little bit more on the strikeout and walk perspective once he got to triple A, but um, talk to me a little bit about Nick Frasso and and maybe even is, is he a 2024 Dodgers contributor or are we a little ways away? I think potentially 2024, depending on how things go uh, when healthy, this is one of the highest upside arms. Uh, some of the best stuff in the system uh, it's a three pitch mix, fastball, slider, change up, uh, all three uh, potentially above average pitches. Uh, fastball has been up to the upper 90s. The slider has a ton of horizontal movement. So, you know, when you're talking about the guys, there's a lot of upper level arms. Landon Knack is, is another one. Uh, not many with higher ceiling than him and a realistic chance to start. Uh, you know, as far as these guys go, because all of them, the starting question is still a question. Yeah. Now you in your last update, which again was midway through the season had Frasso um, ahead of Gavin stone. Um, I believe Emmett Sheehan had already graduated from prospect status. Like where, where does he stack up with a guy like Emmett Sheehan with a guy like Ryan Pepio? I'm guessing Bobby Miller is still the top kind of young pitcher that the Dodgers have. Is it Pepio two and then Sheehan three and Frasso four? You know, I, I think this is really where subjectivity comes into play. Um, you can put them in any different order. You know, you throw Kyle Hurt in there, you throw River Ryan in there, uh, all these young arms that you can make a reasonable argument, I think, after Bobby Miller for any of them. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, the second guy on this list that was protected is Landon Knack. Not quite in the same tier. Knack is more of a high floor guy is the read that I get more than a sort of um, – you know, future number one ace type player. But the background on Knack, 26-year-old, he was a second-round pick back in 2020. Um, similar to Frasso, split the year between AA and AAA. He was pretty a lot more innings at, at AAA than, than Frasso had. A 2.2 ERA at AA, a 2.93 ERA at AAA. Um, again, AA, a huge gap between strikeout rate and walk rate, a 22% strikeout rate minus walkout rate. Um, but both of those numbers went the wrong way once he moved up to triple a um i've from the outside again not having seen him not being a scout not being a prospect expert like you are knack is always one of these guys that i've just had a positive feeling about he can throw strikes he has control he has command the stuff is you know good not great it seems like but he's just from afar just in a guy that i've always kind of liked so give me your thoughts on knack and, and same question like is this a 2024 dodgers contributor potentially yeah, a little bit of a different story than Nick Frasso. Um, not a guy who's going to blow you away with with ridiculous stuff, uh, but the pitchability is up there in the system. Yeah. Um, an older prospect, he was an older prospect when he was drafted. Uh, he's dealt with a little bit of injury concerns. Otherwise, uh, you know, he might have been moved up a little quicker through the system when they needed help last year. Could have been one of those guys, ultimately was not. Yeah, I don't think it's out of the question for a 2024 debut. This is someone who is pretty close to major league ready. Yeah. Uh, like you said, doesn't necessarily project as a one or a two. Uh, 
but more of a, a back end starter. Yeah. And, and I mean, look, with all three of these guys, not to speculate, but we're talking about a, I, I would say Knack and Fiducia, especially potent guys that I wouldn't be shocked if they got traded at some point. Frasso, I would probably be surprised only because of the high regard it seems like he has as a pitching prospect in the Dodgers need. But would you agree that Knack and Fiducia, just because of the glut of guys at their position that is that are further along than them, that have higher upsides than them, that both of these next two guys could be potential trade pieces? Maybe. I, you know, I think any any prospect in the system is a potential yeah. trade piece if the if the guy coming back on the other side is right. Yeah. Um, you know, the Dodgers don't have right now anyone so highly regarded like a like a Corey Seager level prospect. Yeah. Um, or even like a Cody Bellinger, Walker Wheeler level prospect. Um, some of the names being floated out here, you know, on the hot stove trade market, uh, yeah. I don't think you could really say no to including any of those guys. Yeah. It's a great point. It's a great point. The last guy here, Hunter Fiducia, a catcher, 26 year old. Uh, you want to talk about a, another guy, you know, we go from a guy they required via trade, a second round pick. Now you have Fiducia, a 12th, 12th rounder back in 2018. So a guy who could have been taken in the rule five draft, I believe the last two seasons was not selected either time. Um, 2022, kind of a average season, 790 OPS at triple a, below average compared to league wide last year though the average ticks up 40 points the on base almost 70 points he hits 11 home runs in 90 games um talk me through fiducia because this is the one that when i looked at the list i said given the state of catching around the league it felt like this wasn't a guy they could just let go for nothing yeah it wouldn't surprise me to see him be a backup catcher for half a decade or, or yeah. more uh in the majors uh steady behind the plate solid as a hitter doesn't chase a whole lot will provide a little bit of power you know if he's playing a full season he's not going to hit probably not hitting 25 but he'll get yeah. you 10 or 15 will take his walks um yeah i i think and he's, he's a little bit older he's had now a year and a half in triple a yeah ready to be a major league catcher in some fashion with the dodgers having will smith uh if he's on the dodgers probably a backup role but uh given the performance last year that's a position that they could upgrade. Is Hunter Fiducia the number two, the, the the second best major league ready catcher that the Dodgers have on their 40 man roster right now, Justin? Offensively, I okay. think so. Okay. I mean, because Barnes, Austin Barnes, who I'm comparing him to, defensively doesn't grade out well. I think the strength that he has is game management, game pitch calling, that kind of thing. Um, so is that. Like is Fiducia, would you say he's an upgrade as like a, the ability to throw guys out? Barnes, you know, his pop time, his arm strength was among the worst in the league. Yeah, I, I think he, he's an upgrade there, but tough to replace what Barnes would do from a game management pitch calling standpoint, especially if the Dodgers are going to have a lot of young pitchers uh, to deal with. Obviously, yeah. Hunter Fiducia would have worked with a lot of them already, Yeah, uh, but hard to, hard to quantify the experience that Barnes would bring. At the same time, uh, it's also hard to do much worse than his offensive performance last year. No offense to him. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the tricky part to me. Obviously, Barnes has one year left on a contract. I believe he's making three and a half million dollars. It's not a big number. The state of catching league wide is not awesome. Um, I, I just to me, I look at it and I understand the things that Austin Barnes brings to the table. I don't, it seems strange to me that they would carry four catchers on their 40 man roster with Diego Cartaya already also taking up a spot and not a guy that's going to be anywhere near the major leagues. Um, which maybe that's not weird because they probably, you know, could potentially need an emergency third catcher at some point. I, I just look at that position when they decide to keep Fiducia. It just screams to me that either Barnes or Fiducia might not make it through to opening day and still be on the Dodgers roster. Do you, do you agree with sort of that tendency or do you think you, you wouldn't be surprised if all these guys remained on the 40 man kind of throughout the year? I don't think it would surprise me, but at the same time, if you do want to trade Austin Barnes, uh, Hunter Fiducia is a guy who you can not feel certain about, but feel comfortable about maybe throwing into a backup role and at least giving him a shot. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of veteran catchers around where if you needed a, a backup catcher or someone to fill in, uh, that might be a, a guy that you can, you can find or even sign off the street. Yeah. Uh, so no, I think if, if Austin Barnes were not here next year, 
uh, I do think the backup role pending any additions would be Hunter Fiducius to lose. Okay. Last question before we get you out of here, the Dodgers protect three. They obviously there's a, a bevy of guys that were available to be protected. Uh, Jose Ramos uh, among others. Were there any names from your perspective that either a, you were surprised went unprotected or B that you think could be in, in danger of being selected in the rule five draft. In terms of prospect status, Jose Ramos, like you said, uh, Yanir Fernandez, those are probably the two most notable names. Uh, I don't necessarily know if either of them would get taken uh, Ramos. Uh, I don't think he, unless I'm forgetting the late season promotion last year, hasn't played above double a uh, Yanir Fernandez. Uh, also has not seen the high levels of the minors. So it would be tough to take those guys. And even if they're in a bench role in the major leagues, throwing them in, it would do a lot to stunt their development. Uh, one guy who I think could be at risk of being taken is Alec Gamboa, who's a lefty reliever. Uh, it was a ninth round pick back in 2019, pretty sure. Uh, and he, he got up to AAA this year, mid 90s fastball, above average vertical movement. Um, a lot of strikeouts had some trouble with walks, um, but the fastball has been up to the upper nineties, even though it hasn't sat there. Uh, I like this stuff. I'm not necessarily terribly surprised that he wasn't protected, but stuff is good enough to take a shot on, I think by some team in the rule five draft. And yeah. And look, this is, the Dodgers have, have lost relievers in the rule five draft. I believe it's two years in a row. Um, Gus Varlin, of course, was returned to the Dodgers last year, but um, was it the year before that Sheffield got taken in the Rule 5 draft? Might have been three. I'm not sure exactly the years, but uh, Jordan Sheffield, uh, Brett DeGeis, uh right. last year, Jose Hernandez as well, who stuck with the Pirates throughout the year. Okay. Uh, so if you're going to take a guy in the Rule 5 draft, the easiest guys to take are those relievers who you can kind of hide at the back end of, end of the bullpen. And if they turn out to be good... They can actually be very valuable pieces. Uh, Garrett Whitlock with the Red Sox, uh, Trevor Stefan with uh, with the Guardians, two recent examples. Both guys who were taken from the Yankees, ironically. Uh, the two recent examples of relievers taken in the Rule 5 draft who've gone on to be impact relievers. Awesome, awesome. Well, Justin, we appreciate your time, as always, joining us here on Dodger Heads. Again, the Dodgers protect three players. They are now up to 38 players on their 40-man roster. So there's going to be some movement. Uh, I imagine we all expect them to sign far more than two new players this year, if you include all the free agents, guys who have left the roster, um, the Shohei Otanis of the world as well. So some movement to do for the Dodgers, but Nick Frasso, Landon Knack, Hunter Fiducia protected from the Rule 5 draft. That is Justin Lorber. You can find him at Future Dodgers on Twitter, futuredodgers.com as well for all of his prospect rankings and that kind of stuff. Justin, thank you as always for your time and uh, enjoy uh, enjoy the rest of the offseason, all right? Yeah, you too, Jeff. Take it easy, everybody. We'll see you soon. And of course, go Dodgers. Thank you.